While attending the Ohio State University, Aaron had developed and grown five prosthetics, a not-for-profit organization he founded in high school. So, not your average high school. Uh, the story of Form 5 begins with the story of Aaron, who was born with a limb difference. His right arm stops shortly after his elbow. Despite being born with only one hand, Aaron didn't try out his first prosthesis until he was a freshman in high school. Unfortunately, it didn't fit well, and it was expensive, especially considering that it would eventually outgrow it. Disappointed but not defeated, Aaron embarked on a do-it-yourself mission to make his own prosthesis. At 15, 15 years old, he designed and 3D printed his own prosthesis utilizing New Albany School's MIT Fabrication Lab. That's the short story of how Aaron's here today, and I'll let him fill you in on the rest. Aaron? Okay, I think this works, and I talk very loud, so I might not even need it, but um, good morning. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak to your club. Uh, in addition to the incredible work that I'm blessed to do at Form 5, uh, I also am a Rotarian. So I am from the New Albany uh, Rotary Club. Uh, I joined about a year ago, so I'm quite new to Rotary. Um, but as I am known to say, I feel like I've been a Rotarian all my life. I know that's kind of cheesy, but if you've been a Rotarian for a long time, you probably feel the same way. It's like this has been my path and I found it. So. And I'm also president-elect of the New Albany Rotary Club. So um, what that means and what will translate that for us Rotary people is that um, I either missed many meetings last year or I attended too many meetings last year. So um, now the president-elect of the club, I'll be joining um, and leading our great team starting in July of this year. So um, quite an exciting year ahead for Form 5 and myself, and I look forward to sharing more about that. So. Um, as Mark had shared, um, I'm founder and uh, executive director of Form 5 Prosthetics. Uh, I am blessed every day to wake up and do what I love uh, within the organization. Uh, on top of that, I also am uh, pursuing my undergraduate degree at The Ohio State University. Um, by the grace of God, I'll graduate in May um, and uh, look forward to jumping full time into Form 5 uh, upon graduating. So my degree has been in marketing over the last four years. I've been um, really honing my skills in, learning what I'm good at, what areas I need to perfect uh, through my education and have had the, the opportunity to apply what I'm learning in the classroom to something in the real world. And so a uh, very unique opportunity. I often um, describe it as like, okay, there's student athletes and they're like performing in the classroom, performing on the field. I call myself a student entrepreneur. So like I'm up all night doing homework and then all day I'm working um, as an executive. So. Um, a little bit more about my story and how Form 5 started. Um, as you can see, I was born without my right hand. Um, it wasn't until I was in high school, my freshman year, um, that I went and explored um, prosthetics. And so um, uh, that's the short story, and I'm going to share and uh, divulge a little bit more in the extended story. So <clears throat> kind of breaking down the timeline here, it starts uh, with one moment, my birth. Uh, so I was born in 1999. I'm a Y2K baby. Um, and uh, this was completely unknown to my parents. So my parents had no indication I was going to be born with a limb difference until I was born. So May 17th, 1999, had a healthy baby boy, but he was born with only one hand. And so um, navigating uh, my adolescence, um, there wasn't a lot of resources out there for people like myself. Um, and often left my parents looking for those resources, that support. Um, and so uh, I share this example. So early 2000s, um, there's a picture of me um, riding a four-wheeler, sticking my tongue out, absolutely living my best life. Um, and uh, I share this picture and this story in particular because it's really an example of um, what Form 5 could have meant to me if it existed when I was younger. And so this picture shows, uh, obviously, living my best life. Um, the story behind this is my birthday list, my Christmas list, my Easter list, every list of gifts that I wanted. I really, really wanted a motorcycle, like a, like a, a battery-operated power wheels motorcycle. They make the Barbie Jeeps. They make the motorcycles. They make the four-wheelers. I really wanted the motorcycle, the dirt bike. 
Um, and if anyone's ever operated a, you know, a motor vehicle, um, like a motorcycle, there's a throttle. And the throttle is often on the right side. And so um, this being a challenge, uh, having a limb difference. And so, again, this was on every single list of mine. And those of you who are parents know that if this is something your child wants, you will do absolutely everything in your power and ability to give them that. And uh, my parents called and was like, hey, this is the situation, Power Wheels, would you modify this device for our son? And of course, big corporation, they were like, no, we have an assembly line and we make tens of thousands of these a day and we can't stop our assembly line and modify just for your son. So um, I ended up with the four-wheeler, which you can see I still loved and appreciated, but um, there are so many activities that people with limb differences aren't able to experience just because we can't modify just some simple little thing. Uh, and so uh, I provide that example because again, if Form 5 and its existence um, you know, was around when I was younger, just imagine the things that um, myself and other people with limb differences could achieve. So kind of fast forwarding through my adolescence um, and really navigating um, the two-handed world with my one, uh, I started a blog in 2014. So um, around the same time I was getting into high school, um, I was connected uh, through social media uh, to the limb difference community. So I think one of the most incredible things of social media um, and positive thing is the way that it can connect people. And so um, there had not been a group or forum uh, for people with limb differences, parents, individuals with limb differences, um, to connect and have that community. And so for the first time being at 15 years old and walking into, um, it's called, we have a great name, it's called the Nub Club. Um, and walking into the Nub Club at 15 years old um, and seeing other people that looked like me was such an enriching experience. And so um, I wanted to do that. I wanted to cultivate that community. And so in high school, before I even started making prosthetics, I started a blog called Alive with Five, um, you know, cutely named after uh, living life with only one hand. And so really the, the idea of that blog was just to share my experiences. Um, and then that's what inspired me uh, my freshman year to get my first prosthesis. So I went to a clinic, uh, received a prosthesis, and was exposed to the barriers uh, that people like myself with limb differences face, whether it's cost, uh, whether it's accessibility. Um, but then there's also something that I saw um, was that there was a lack of innovation. Um, especially in upper limb prosthetics. So you think a lot of the innovation that's being seen um, in, in the industry, a lot of it has been lower extremity. You know, they're creating different devices. Um, you know, there's legs for walking, there's blades for running. Um, and there's this idea of being um, task specific. So there's devices that are performing certain functions and tasks rather than uh, what's predominantly provided to people with upper limb differences, which is just like, we're gonna give you a hand. Like we're just gonna give you a hand. Um, and so just seeing that lack of innovation, the inaccessibility, um, you know, there needed to be something said. And so as a young individual with technology at my fingertips, um, I knew that there had to be something better out there than what I got. And so uh, in 2015, uh, my sophomore year of high school, um, at 15 years old, I designed and 3D printed my own prosthetic arm. And so uh, really from that experience and um, you know, taking a lot of the things that I had learned up until that point of my love for technology, um, you know, service and the community, um, you know, was able to empower myself in a way that I never imagined. Um, and it really inspired me to give that back to other people. Um, and I think having that community and being connected to that community, I saw um, what this could do to me could uh, mean so much to others like myself. And so uh, very early on in 2015, the idea was to start a nonprofit. And when you're 16 years old, you have no idea what a nonprofit is or how to even do that. So um, I reached out to people, called people, I'm like, I don't understand what this means, 501C what? Um, and just trying to understand the process um, at a very young age. And so it wasn't until I ended up graduating high school. So I spoke about the idea of Form 5 at a TED Talk in 2016. Um, and then my senior project is really, um, high school senior project, is uh, really the catalyst that launched Form 5 as a nonprofit organization. Um, really, the, the biggest thing being that I needed to be 18 years old to sit on my board. Um, but uh, 
In 2017, I did my senior project called Forming Five, uh, which was creating a seven-year-old girl her first ever prosthesis. So the picture of Maddie, she's Form Five's first recipient, um, and we worked with her um, and made her a device. She wanted it to be a panda arm, so it was all white and black. We've designed a panda face in it um, and really made it personalized to her. Um, which I think kind of shows the, the stark difference with this innovation and technology. Because I think in the past, a lot of people um, with limb differences and limb loss wanted a device that hid and masked their difference. Um, I think this generation is really looking at something, how can I accentuate? How can I celebrate my difference? Um, and almost, um, you know, have it be a conversation starter, not be something that you shy away from. So um, upon graduating high school, I formed the organization, literally graduated in May, and like we were a nonprofit in August. Um, had incredible community support that has brought Form 5 where it is today from the very beginning. Uh, and so in 2018, uh, brought a board of directors together, um, the founding board, really looking at ways that Form 5 could really build infrastructure within the organization, um, knowing that it had a really big vision uh, and what it could mean to the limb difference community. So um, as the organization took off and grew, uh, we launched a COFAP workshop, uh, which is a workshop we do annually. Um, so this is our way of doing product development uh, with the limb difference community. So uh, we're not a, you know, we're a medical device company, but we're not like most medical device companies where we innovate, you know, technology or products and we say, you need this and you need to buy it. Um, you know, individuals uh, come to us and they, you know, are, they share their struggles, their barriers, um, and uh, kind of uh, as a collaborator with them, Form 5 helps them come up with solutions to these problems and barriers. Um, and that's what we do at COFAB. So COFAB is a six-week program. Uh, we bring in individuals with limb differences, and we pair them with college engineering students, design students, occupational therapy students, very interdisciplinary curriculum that we've developed uh, because we're reinventing prosthetics. Um, we need different ideas, different perspectives around the table um, to be able to spark that new innovation. And so uh, we do this program bringing in those young individuals um, who have the passion uh, and the talents they're learning in the classroom and giving them the opportunity to, to make a real difference in the world. So uh, we just actually got done with our third annual COFAB uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, we worked with three gir young girls. I'll share some videos a little bit later. Um, but that's an incredible workshop that we do every year. And really the idea is how can we, as an organization, Form 5, uh, make devices that are gonna be impactful to the community? Um, and we do that by listening to them, including them in the process and the design of their prosthesis, very similarly to what I did when I started Form 5. So kind of walking the talk um, and what we wanna do, um, COFAB is really our engine of doing so. In 2020, um, the world, or the world, the year that was like no other. Um, so obviously cannot say COVID anymore in a presentation um, because it's almost impossible not to say it. So um, COVID happened, uh, but more importantly, we, we expanded our board of directors last year. And so, um, you know, growing from a board of four to eight individuals in a global pandemic, um, was quite difficult, but this was also a really unique time for the organization to start building out the infrastructure that was laid uh, by the previous board. So last year we chartered our first ever committees. We, um, you know, started looking at having an executive leadership team. We looked at, um, you know, uh, relocating our space. Um, but most importantly, we were faced with a lot of the troubles that everyone else did through COVID. We couldn't meet with our clientele. We couldn't bring together the limb difference community. Um, and we had like six 3D printers just sitting idle. Um, and we had just chartered the Innovation and Technology Committee. Um, and this is an in a committee comprised of engineers, designers, medical professionals uh, from Battelle, Honda, AEP, um, all volunteering their time on this committee. Uh, the first week that it was chartered, um, COVID happened. And a lot of the committee members asked me, like, Aaron, I'm seeing all this stuff happening overseas with, um, you know, 3D printing PPE and supporting and combating the pandemic. Is this something you think Form 5 could support? Um, and if you haven't picked up on my energy yet, those are the questions that I love. Because I'm like, of course we can. How are we going to do it? I don't know, but we're going to do it. Um, and so within that committee, in about a week span, they designed a reusable face shield that Form 5 later patented 
Um, and with the help of the AEP Foundation, the Columbus Foundation, the Albany Rotary Foundation, um, over the course of 2020, Form 5 manufactured and donated um, over 6,000 face shields to human health service organizations in Ohio. Um, so thank you. Um, and a lot of that was thanks to Rotary. Um, I say this, um, you know, I joined Rotary the same time, you know, that COVID happened. And I think because of the mission of Rotary and the dedication of its members and their um, big thinking, it made me realize that Form 5's mission, yes, we, you know, our scope is within prosthetics, but the technology and the passion and the resources that we have could empower so many other people outside the limb difference community. And we saw COVID as an opportunity to do that. So I'm um, very blessed for Rotary support and us pivoting to produce face shields um, and making that impact in the community. So 2021 um, has been a, a great year. Uh, we've grown, we added a, a new board member. Um, we're looking uh, now at uh, growing into 2022 and other exciting things, but I um, wanna share kind of more granular information about the organization. So our mission really is to empower people to successfully interact with their world and their future. Um, like I had mentioned, uh, we've done this in a lot of different ways, COVID kind of being an accelerant of that, uh, but really we, we meet people where they're at today. We wanna to understand their aspirations, their struggles, the things that they need, the resources. Um, and, as act, and as an organization, build that um, success plan for them to be um, who they wanna be, who they imagine themselves to be, um, and the things that they wanna achieve. So I had mentioned we have different committees that support uh, the various work of the organization. So the Innovation and Technology Committee, I had spotlighted on their work for PPE, uh, but they also do year-round projects. So we're looking at, you know, we do our cofab, we work with about three to five people, and that six weeks frame, we literally make prosthetics in six weeks. Uh, but these are year-round projects. You know, they require more R&D, um, and often it could look like an idea that came out of COFAB that needs refined. Um, you know, this is what that committee does. And so, uh, Lindsay, she um, is an incredible, she's the chair of the Innovation Technology Committee. She works tirelessly year-round, coordinating volunteers, um, bringing people together that, um, you know, they might love engineering, car parts or other devices or things at their work, but they're looking for ways to get involved in the community and give back. And so um, she's been incredible in building out our volunteer network and finding passionate individuals um, that want to support the mission of Form 5. So <clears throat> I had mentioned kind of about the prosthetic industry and just kind of the things that Form 5 sees as barriers. Um, and so we've really identified our, our niche, our niche market, um, and that's really custom application prosthetics. Uh, through our COFAB workshop, we've learned time and time again um, that the devices that people with limb differences are looking for um, help them perform certain tasks. Um, so whether it's riding their bike or playing an instrument, um, these devices um, aren't something that helps them do everything. It helps them do something specific. Um, and often, um, you know, the, the cost of traditional prosthetics, uh, you know, it's anywhere from 10 to... 35, almost $50,000, depending on the device. And so, um, you know, looking at young kids that are um, involved in everything, um, you can imagine as a parent, there's an expense to that. You know, I need to buy my kid cleats for soccer. Um, imagine that being a $50,000 expense just to participate in the sport. Um, so there's this um, shift that needs to happen in just the way that um, we're innovating these devices. And so Form 5 is very big on um, creating custom application prosthetics um, that really empower uh, our users to do things that they never thought that they could do. So um, this is a picture of Maddie. Uh, she's one of, I think, four individuals now that have received Form 5's bike prosthesis, uh, empowering her to be able to ride her bike. Um, I, don't have, I need to put, switch out this picture, but um, we actually, the first or second bike prosthetic we worked on was at our COFAB, our first COFAB workshop. Uh, we worked with a, an adult woman and she uh, hadn't been on her bike since she was about 10 years old and she wanted to ride in Pelotonia. And we worked with her um, and she didn't get to ride last year because of COVID, um, but we worked with her and uh, provided and fit her with a prosthesis to ride. She got to ride last year. Um, and something that has been kind of an, or an ornate relationship that I have with every Form 5 recipient is the lives that I am impacting, the lives that Form 5 is impacting, they're impacting me. 
and I rode with her. So I rode the longest on a bike I've ever ridden in my life, 25 miles, crazy person, um, 25 miles uh, with Jody, and uh, we rode this past year. So I uh, form five fit uh, myself with a prosthesis and I rode as well. So um, doing things that you maybe never thought that you could do um, is something that we like to, to promote at form five. And I think it's because so many people um, disabilities or not, I think so many people um, get into this perspective like, oh, I can't do X, Y, or Z because of this situation that I'm in. But um, there's so many things that you can do. You have to remember, you know, that there is a lot of power in your own hands um, and how you can actuate that and um, enact that change in your own life. Um, so we provided a, this is a cello prosthetic device we've worked on. This is where I go rogue in my presentation. Um, so we worked at our COFAB workshop last year. We worked with a young boy on another bicycle device. And I thought I'd share, um, let you guys hear and see him, um, but also some of the uh, perspective of his mother. It's fun, like this whole process, everyone is so brilliant. They are able to just visualize what they want to make happen and then they make it happen. And they've been super flexible as we have kind of grown through this process of figuring out what Jack needs to be able to accomplish the goal that is most important to him at the time. We submitted a video because we had heard that um, Form 5 um, was doing a thing called CoFab and that if we could just submit a video that perhaps he would get chosen to be able to make an adapter for him. And at the time he was struggling to be able to, be able to ride his bike and um, he couldn't reach the handlebars very well. We thought if we could just have something that made it a little bit easier for him to reach that handlebar, that would be perfect. Riding his bike is just one of his very favorite things to do, so it's really, really, it means a lot to me to be able to see him get on that bike and be able to just ride to his heart's content. Benefit um, from last year and then in my continuation of going rogue, um, I just pull up our Instagram. So we worked with three, three boys last year, and for whatever reason, we ended up working with three girls this year. Um, so these are the individuals we worked with about, um, or this past month, um, in October. Um, these three were looking for devices to play s specific sports. So um, Callie wanted to play softball. Um, Grace is going to play volleyball. And Takara, she is involved in everything at her age of two and a half. So um, she wanted something to be able to play, um, like her, like, she wanted a device that helped her hold like specific toys. So like she liked to play like her little drum set. So they wanted something to hold uh, the drumstick and then um, also some other items like her little tricycle and things like that. But we worked with Callie um, and she wanted to play softball. So this is one of our more challenging devices. about um, just like the perspective of prosthetics um, you know I'm a marketing major and I've learned a lot at OSU and uh, something that I'm applying to form five and, and with marketing and it really just hit me this year is a lot of the medical devices a lot of the prosthetics um, you know there's a um, Cali actually has one of the top of the line 3d printed bionic prosthesis um, and they market them in a way that they help you do everything. This device is $30,000, buy it, it helps you do everything. Um, and that's not the truth. Um, she can't play softball, she can't um, you know, uh, use the device for cheerleading and fear that she might drop her $30,000 device or it might something happen to it. Um, that's not practical. Um, and, and we're learning that because we're listening to the community. And so at Form 5, we don't look at prosthetics um, you know, the traditional way. Everyone probably came into this meeting and thought, okay, prosthetics is a replacement hand, arm, or leg. Uh, at Form 5, we think prosthetics can be anything. Um, they're a, a tool, they're a piece of equipment um, that empower people to do the things that they want to do. They're no different than a pair of eyeglasses. Um, you know, they don't need to be astronomical to receive, um, and they should also be something that um, empowers people to do the things that they love. So, um, Form 5 does a lot of other really cool, innovative work year-round. Um, some of the projects that we worked on this past summer um, involved um, you know, really out-of-the-box. We're, we're very innovative and futuristic, and so 
yes, we've innovated and advanced a lot of technology within prosthetics and people who are missing their limbs, but some of the mechanical uh, or some of the mechanisms and the designs we've created are transmittable to individuals who have their limbs, but they've lost mobility and function of them. Um, so we're exploring working with a young boy actually uh, with a very degenerative disease. At eight years old, he's pretty much lost function of his hands. Um, so we've been developing exoskeleton designs that are helping him regain mobility of his fingers. Um, we're working uh, with an older gentleman. We've started working on some like some orthopedic shoes, um, which might sound kind of out there. Uh, I never thought when I started Form 5 I'd be a sneakerhead, but this past mm -hmm. summer I've been like drawing shoes and helping design shoes that's been really neat. Um, we've also dabbled a little bit um, with animals. Um, so I will let you guys guess, what animal did Form 5 work with first? I know you're never gonna guess it, it's crazy. Um, we worked with a raccoon. So, and, and, and so, I know everyone's like, what? Um, I always lead it that way. And really, to, to answer it, it's the emails that I get that I absolutely read, and I'm like, I can't say no to this. Like, how can we not help Captain Biggles? Like, um, so we're working with him. This is one of the first prototypes. I haven't had a chance to post Baby the second boy. video. Baby boy, come here. I didn't even know they made that noise. Come here. Come to mom. So he was paralyzed oh boy, on his back oh legs. He fell about 30 feet from a That's tree. That's my baby boy. And so we ended up, um, this is the first version of it. The biggest challenge is um, fastening it to him. So we built a new structure. Uh, we're still kind of figuring what's comfortable for him, what's going to work uh, for him. Uh, because in designing this, um, there's not a lot of research in wildlife prosthetics or adaptive gait devices. A lot of them have been primarily like dogs and cats. And so like we're designing this thing and we're like, oh, that seems that the height, that height is right. And like we're thinking it's like for a dog. And then we get with him and it's like, he's literally like this close to the ground. So um, I've had a, a lot of learning curves involved in this project. But again, we're always trying to up the ante um, at Form 5. We're just eager to do more. We want to help more people. Um, we see that our mission can really impact um, a lot of lives in the world. And then something else that we do um, that we'd be uh, remiss not to talk about, just thinking about big vision uh, of Form 5, you know, there's um, a lot of research and development that goes into the organization. Um, and if anyone's familiar with the technology of 3D printing, um, it primarily uses what type of material? Plastic. Plastic. Um, and so when I first started Form 5, uh, you know, wanting to have a big impact on a limb difference community, um, I wanted to do, if we, were gonna, if we were going to reinvent prosthetics and we were going to make an impact in the limb difference community, um, I wanted Form 5 to do it right the first time, and that involved two big steps. One of them being inclusive and collaborative, um, and the other being um, sustainable in our efforts, um, and doing that out the gate. So since its inception, Form 5 has been working diligently on becoming a zero-waste organization uh, where all of our scrap uh, from our prototyping, discarded devices, old devices, we recycle all of that back down. Um, and a part of my high school project um, was creating a proprietary recycling process. Uh, so that Form 5 takes that plastic material um, and we turn it back into filament, which is for 3D printing. So our devices are eco-friendly um, and it allows us as an organization um, to cut our cost of manufacturing and therefore we give our devices away at no cost. So all the individuals we've worked with over the last four years as an organization, they've paid zero for their prosthetic. Um, and we want to continue doing that. And as a way and means of doing that, um, we're looking at creative uh, business models. How can we look at you know, taking this material that Form 5 is collecting, um, you know, we, we received a grant from Swaco, uh, the Solid Waste Authority of Ohio, and so they um, you know, are interested in supporting our innovative work and how Form 5 can take this technology, um, not only scale its impact um, and its production of prosthetics, but also as a means of you know, earning income. And um, you know, earning income as an organization, as well as having the ability to take in more plastics, divert more waste from the landfills, um, and recycle them into material that people can use for their 3D printers. So um, we're doing a lot of really cool stuff uh, across the board, um, and I'm sure most people look at it and it's like some of these things don't necessarily relate, uh, but the bigger vision is this. Um, we care about humanity. We care about the environment, and those two things don't operate in silos. So Form 5 is looking at two very different problems of plastic pollution and you know, the availability of prosthetics, innovative, impactful prosthetics. 
um, how can we link these two problems together um, to solve and make a difference? And so um, that's really what I'm here today to talk to you guys about. It's just my passion uh, for humanity and the environment and the incredible work we're doing at Form 5. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity of sharing my story with you guys. Um, and I've definitely opened the floor to any, any and all questions that you may have. Absolutely, I can repeat the question, for sure. Yes, back. You're using 3D printing. Can you tell us a little bit about the size machine you use and the size the output it produces? Absolutely. So um, I'll answer the output question first, and then I'll show some pictures of the printers. Uh, but Form 5 currently has about 20 3D printers at our offices in Gahanna. So we're located at the Edge Innovation Hub, um, which is a part of Donato's and Grody. Uh, and so um, kind of looking at output, um, you know, the more printers we have, the more devices that we can produce. So if we only had one printer, it could take about a week to maybe a month, depending on the device, to fit the individual with their first, uh, first version of their prosthesis. Um, but we have, with our 20 printers, I mean, we could probably make a device in about three days um, or less. So. Um, the more printers, the more technology we, we throw at it, uh, we definitely can, can scale up and, and make more devices a year. What size? Oh, and then what size? Yes, thank you. Um, so I'm going to find, I think I have a picture of a printer on here. So we have, oh, this is one of our, this is our lab. Some of our printers. Um, we have different, uh, different printers, so ones that have more of a taller build volume for uh, printing like sockets. We have some that are wider for printing um, different like components of devices. Um, we've also explored um, different technology. Um, you know, there's printing that uses the filament material um, that Form 5 makes uh, in-house. Um, there's also machines that use resin plastic um, and solidifies them through other bonding methods. Uh, we're, we're always kind of exploring new technology in ways that we can better serve our community. Yes. I just wanted to mention everyone, um, the District 6690 grant that New Albany placed, and I was happy to, to work with uh, Michelle on, um, provided uh, funding for a printer uh, yes. during the pandemic. And that's why it's important to donate to the annual Rotary Foundation. <laughs> Huge. Because the money from the foundation uh, comes back to the district, and this is a live example of how, how it makes a difference. The local impact is huge, um, and we're very, very grateful for Rotary. Uh, like I said, and outside of being able to, um, fun fact, all the printers have E names. And so Rotary donated Esme. She's one of my favorite printers. Um, but um, the clubs also rallied around Form 5 um, and helped assemble shields. I'm pretty sure you guys assembled some of our shields, if I'm not mistaken. I know Dana Vogelmeyer was like, how can I help? And I was like, take boxes of shields. Um, so um, yeah, we're, we're very, very grateful for, for the work that um, Rotary is doing and how we can continue to collaborate to have a bigger impact. Yes? Yes. Um, <clears throat> do any insurance policies cover these kinds of things? It's a terrific question. So currently we're still um, in kind of a research and development stage. So we haven't really went to market with any of our devices. That is definitely a huge breakthrough objective of the organization going into the next two years. Um, and yes, there could absolutely be possibilities of, um, you know, looking at either ways the organization licenses the tech, its, technolo its technology or, um, you know, becomes a supplier to prosthetic providers and clinics uh, where they order, you know, this is how most of them work now, you know, they order some device from a supplier and then they provide it to the individual. Um, we could develop relationships like that. Um, we're at that exciting tipping point where we have devices that we've innovated over the last four years that um, I hate saying mass manufactured because there's so much customability to prosthetics. Um, my word is repeatable. So we have designs that are repeatable, like for example, our bike arm, we get a lot of requests for. So how can we um, you know, make that design repeatable so that we can scale up and provide more? And that could very well be an option of being a supplier and, and then insurance would be able to cover those types of expenses. But um, in terms of cost, because I know that question is going to get asked, um, in terms of cost, I mean, we're looking at devices that are costing tens of thousands of 
of dollars. Our devices cost easily less than $5,000 to produce, some of them less than $100 to produce. Um, and you're looking at the majority of that cost being plastic, the material to make the device, um, and Form 5 can find ways that it can make material essentially from nothing, trash or treasure, um, we're able to really scale up and have an impact. Yes, up here. Right. Form 5 and you in 20 years. Oh my gosh, Form 5 and me in 20 years. Um, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> You're really confining me here in a box. Um, really, my vision for Form 5 is, you know, I, I talked about it, I think, in the presentation of, like, I can't do X, Y, or Z because I have one hand. Uh, I've fallen accustomed to that. And so I guess Form 5 and me in 20 years is that no longer being a thing. I think a, a world uh, where individuals with limb differences have those resources and the confidence and support to do the things that they want to do. Um, you know, my... My mother, when she first had me, the first doctor visit she went to, they suggested that she go to an orthopedic um, doctor. And um, he like told her, new mother of this you know, limb different child, he's like, well, this is a very two-handed world and I just don't know how your son's gonna navigate it. Um, in 20 years, I hope that's not the norm. Um, I hope there is resources and there's people out there and there's a community. I've learned that it's, it's huge to have that representation. Um, you know, there's, individuals with limb differences who are saying, I can't play, I can't be an NFL player, I can't play football. Um, but just this past year, the first ever individual with a limb difference was drafted to the NFL, Shaquem Griffin, the Seattle Seahawks. So it takes one person. Um, and it's like, how do we show that person to the whole community and inspire them that they can do those things? Um, it's very similar to the relationship I have with Jody. Jody inspired me to get on a bike again. Um, we can do more of that. Um, we just need to build that community. Yes. So going back to the first one you made, how many parts did you have to print on your 3D printer to assemble your first one? Oh my gosh. If you remember approximately. Uh, over 20 different pieces. Um, and the first printer I had, his name was Eli. Um, and I still, Eli is still a part of our printer fleet. So eight years later, Eli is still printing our prosthetics. Um, and yeah, but I think it was about 20 different pieces and it took me over a month to, to get everything printed. And of course like fight technology cause it doesn't work half the time, right? You know, um, and then assembling it and figuring it out, um, about over a month. Great question. One more question. Last one. Aaron, tell us how you got involved with Rotary. How you heard about it, how you got involved. Oh my gosh, that's a really good wrap up question. Um, <laughs> how did I hear about Rotary? Um, you know, I, I'm i very, I don't know, self-aware or, con I guess I'm not that's the word, I'm self-aware, but I'm conscious of like my environment and I just always remember seeing the wheel in the community. And I never really knew what it meant, but I knew it meant something significant. And um, it wasn't until I got older um, you know, and I started doing Form 5 and giving back in the community that I really wanted to find uh, a medium of uh, giving back in a way outside of Form 5. And because I am so focused on this vision that I'm moving forward, but it's like, what are ways that I can apply my skills in other areas, support other communities? Um, and that's what attracted me to Rotary. Um, you know, just the, the vast work that it's doing and it's, you know, seven areas of focus and the way that um, it's not just reaching local, but globally. Um, that's what kind of inspired me. And so um, I attended the a New Albany Rotary meeting and kind of learned more about just the, the basics and what they were doing. And then um, definitely did my own online research. And I was like, okay, there's some really cool things that are happening here. Um, and I think something that interests me most about Rotary is that I think this is a very unique time to be involved in Rotary. There is a lot of change happening. There's a lot of new ideas coming forward. Um, and it's just something that's invigorating to be a part of. I like, I'm energized by being a part of something that's bigger than myself um, that I know I can plug in in a meaningful way and make a difference. So that's what got me into Rotary. Cool. Thank you very much again. Anything else? If not, we are adjourned.